Today we're gonna to be building the Sherry All-Star Node. This is developed by Steve N8AR, a member of my former club, the South Lyon Area Amateur Radio Club, N8SL, in South Lyon, Michigan. Hi, Steve, and hi, everyone at the Slark Club. And special thanks to Jason from Ham Radio 2.0 for providing me with this awesome All-Star Node. So what this does is this is going to allow us to get on All-Star and use just about any analog ham radio HT to connect through the internet and talk to people, similar to DMR and D-Star and Fusion and all that, but we don't need any special kind of digital radio. Uh, it's all over analog and it's pretty darn easy. So uh, let's see what we got here and let's start building something. So everything's gonna be housed in this Argon Neo Raspberry Pi case. This is for a Raspberry Pi 4, which I happen to have Rachia. And the first thing we need to do is drill some holes in this case. So we're gonna take this 3D printed guide in the top of the case, and with the case upside down, we wanna slide the guide over, ensuring that it is fully seated on there. Now he mentions using a center punch or something to mark the holes. I don't own a center punch, so I'm just gonna use a 1 16th inch drill bit really quick just to mark where these are. And now we can see I've got some marks. And then if we flip it over, here's the top. We're gonna drill a 16th inch hole in the three left holes, and then a 960, 932nd hole uh, in the far right one for the SMA connector. Now we need to drill out this far right hole to accommodate our SMA. He calls for a 930 seconds drill bit. I don't have a 930 seconds drill bit, so I'm just gonna gradually make this bigger until this fits in. Look at that. That was a 1564th bit. And yes, the Imperial system is stupid. Now we wanna get a bit larger than the hole, and we actually wanna kinda of grind away some of the paint around here. So our washer has a good ground connection there. So this is a 5 16th drill bit. And he suggests just kind of augering it out. You could probably use an X-Acto knife or something as well. Or we just go a big half inch guy, see what that does. There, that looks good. Next, we're gonna take this center part of the case and we need to drill a hole right on that number two. So the second number down, number 20, the two of the 20, we need to drill a 1 8 inch hole right through that number two. So again, he recommends putting a center punch on there. I'm gonna use a 16th inch drill bit to kind of mark that first. And now we can drill it out with our eighth inch bit. Hopefully just like that. A wire is supposed to go through there, so we'll find out what that's for later. Next is the fun part. We get to solder the radio module to the PCB, and this is something new for me. This has what are called castellated solder joints, so you see those little grooves in there. That's what we get to deal with. So we've got grooves on three sides, and then one side that has no grooves and that's gonna align with the bottom here where it says U2. So the bottom left is pin one, then up here is pin 12, down here is pin 18. We're gonna start by soldering pin 13 to hold this all in place. Now, I have never heard of this kind of solder joint. There's a link on his instructions to a great video to watch about castellated solder joints that I highly, highly, highly recommend watching. So we're gonna start with a 
We're gonna tin the pad 13. I'm gonna add a little flux here so we can get that reflowed. Get a little more solder on there. And then we're gonna reheat the solder, slide the board in, and theoretically, make sure everything's aligned. Now we can continue soldering the rest of the pads starting from one through seven and then 12 through 18. The instructions say we wanna create a short to the shield of the radio module on pins seven, nine, 10, and 11 as well. So we're gonna do the top last. Whew, this is nerve wracking. So that looks pretty good. He says to short pin seven to the shield, so I'm gonna go back and short that, and then we'll go ahead and solder pins 12 through 18. All right, that's what the instructions say. So we've got a short to pin seven. And no other shorts, so I'm not that bad at soldering. Now we can do pins 12 through 18. A little bit sticking up on pad 12 there, but see if we can knock that down with a little flux. This is the part of me that I can't leave well enough alone. And I think I just shorted it to the shield. Oh, I didn't. Whew. Now we can solder pins 8, 9, 10, and 11. And pins 9, 10, and 11 also need to be shorted to the shield. Now pads 8, 9, and 10 require a little more heat because they're connected to a ground somewhere. So I just switched to a bigger tip to hopefully make my life easier. But I still haven't soldered them to the shield. I'm just curious if they're already there. Yeah, okay. So pin seven, nine, 10, and 11, you actually don't need to solder or make a solder bridge for nine, 10, and 11, but I did need to make a solder bridge for pin seven. So let's check everything else. All right, we should be good. We'll just clean up with some isopropyl alcohol, get some of that flux off. And hopefully this works and we should make Steve proud. Next, we're gonna take this right angle JST connector and we're gonna solder it right here where it says J1. So we can insert it there. All right, I just placed it on the edge of the counter and slid it up to hold it in place. And we can solder that guy. And we've created a solder bridge, fantastic. Did we? We did not, ha ha. Boy, you gotta be careful there. Now we're gonna temporarily install the Pi 4 into the case. It says leave the plastic on if you don't wanna scratch it. I don't care about that. And we are not going to put this thermal stuff on right now. Then we're gonna take our 40 pin GPIO extender guy here. All right, make sure it's firmly seated in there. Now we can take the pie hat and slide it over the pins. And we will screw it to the case. And then we will solder all 40 of these pins.
Now we're going to take our SMA connector. I'm going to take the screw and the washer off and we're going to slide it onto the PCB and we just want to tack the center pin because we want to make sure we can slide the cover over and then we'll go back and hit the ground in theory anyway. I think I'm going to start with the ground. I can't do this without the things sliding all over the place. So we'll just tack the ground there and then we want to see if this will fit. Which it doesn't, so we need to slide that over just a touch. I might actually make that hole bigger on the case. There we are. Okay. Now I can solder the center pin and the other ground and I'll clean up that first ground once these are done. Cold solder joints all around boys. We'll leave well enough alone there. That should be good. Now we need to unscrew the PCB. We're going to remove the board so we can solder the other two ground pins. And that'll work for me. ABC, always be cleaning. Now we're going to take the pie out of the case, which I have already broken. <laughs> Then we want to get our thermal conductive stuff and peel off only one layer right now. And we're going to stick that right here where these squares are. We really want to press it into place, get it in the little indentation there. Hopefully that's good enough. And then he recommends heating the case and the pads so when we put the pie in, the back case will fit nicely. So I'll go ahead and warm this up with a heat gun. He says to get it quite warm, which I have done. And then go ahead and put the case or the pie in the case and rock it back and forth until it's seated. Wow, that is hot. Oh, crap. Take off the plastic. Ha! Then we can put the pie in and kind of wiggle it in until it's seated. And then we will temporarily hold it in place using two screws. Now we can take our little USB cable and this tiny little ferrite bead and fish the cable through the bead. Go ahead and plug the cable into the sherry hat. Oh, it goes that way. All right. And we're going to fish the wire through the hole we drilled. And go ahead and attach the board back. We want to keep this ferrite as close to the plug as possible, so that seems as good a place as any. And we'll go ahead and screw our hat down. Now looking at the back of the Raspberry Pi, we're going to solder the black wire to this TP6 and we're going to solder the red wire to this TP10. Now these are a little long, so I'm going to trim them down a little bit. Probably cut an inch off of each one maybe. And I'll just strip a tiny little bit. Black to TP6. Beautiful. Now he recommends taking some hot glue and securing the wire down. I don't own a hot glue gun, but I do have this Captain tape, Capton, however you want to say it. So I'm just going to tape the wire down like such. 
And we also don't want the wires catching on the GPIO pins here. So I'm gonna fish them between and put some more tape there. Next, he talks about trimming the ends of the Ethernet jack plastic locator pins so they don't interfere with the installation of the bottom cover. I don't know what the heck that means, so I'm gonna go ahead and install the bottom cover. So we need to remove these screws that we put here temporarily and put back my now broken case. Looks good, no gaps. Now we can install our four rubber baby buggy bumpers. Just like that. Now we've got two of these little 3D printed parts. We're gonna take this smaller one and we're gonna slide that in between the LED lights that just separates them. And now we can install the top cover and then we're gonna put the washer over making sure the serrated part are down. So they're gonna go into that bit of stuff we reamed out earlier. So the teeth are going down and then we can put our nut over, tighten her down Go ahead and attach our antenna. And this other little 3D printed part here, we're gonna put in the top left USB, so nobody uses that. That's where we soldered that red and black wire to pin six and 10, so we don't wanna use that. And finally, we can apply our sticker. Just like that.